Hi, born here in Nova Scotia. Um, it's uh, kind of a nice day and I'm just going to throw some soup balls. I took a little order for four soup balls with handles. Um, so uh, I've got a, done several different styles in the past. Uh, French onion soup is the one that comes to mind. So I'm going to try and do some of those and I'll show you a couple of ways of making handles that can go on them. Um, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. This clay does go in the oven though. Top hand goes down first, then the side hand in. And there was a question, a comment in one of the videos. The uh, person was saying that um, when they open up, they get a little lump in the middle of the pot. So I responded and said, well, make sure that you feel for that point and make a little dimple. Just go in and make a little dimple and you can feel the clay spinning around the tip of your finger and then you know that you're right in the center and then go down let go slowly because you're if you're a beginner i normally pull straight out but let go slowly take a look there's no lump in this one no dimple so then you pull out to your hand and just open it up and then i always run my finger from the wall out to the edge to the center again and just compress that ba base area so if there was a little bump there you could just get rid of it anyway now i think this um ball of clay is too small so this was just under a pound so i'm going to throw a ball shape and then i'll use the bigger lump of course Everybody likes different amounts of soup, so this might be fine for some people anyway. Now, because it's going to have a handle, I'm going to leave the rim thick. It's terrible if you're working on hand building something onto a ball, and the actual ball dif just gets disfigured. This is that rib that I made out of the other one. This is my old one, and this is the one I made, so it's so close to what it looked like when it was brand new. You can see the new one behind is actually what this one used to look like. And I cut it down from a standard wood rib, which is, this is the one you always find in your kits when you get it. So I've just cut this one down. I would tell you to do this if you've got a little saw and some sandpaper, because that one is just, I don't like that hard edge there. So this is much, much nicer. So anyway, the point of it goes underneath, slow it down a touch. Actually, I don't need to do that part of it. I do that on my mugs. And then just use the, the, the metal rib to bend the rib a little bit and it makes a curve. Grab some clay off. Okay, let's, let's show you what this looks like. Nice little curve a thick rim so that we can actually put handles onto it. Now what I do with this is I measure the width across. Boy, this is very dry, uh, stiff, this caliper, because it's, it's been dirty for like decades, I guess. All right, here's your lump of clay. If you're a beginner, make sure that's round. Or you're very strong and you can eat them. Yeah, that's better because I'm making it spill each time. Okay, so we center it. There's some clay spitting out on my wall over there. Well, it's a piece of wood anyway, so it doesn't matter, but I think I have to build something that sits on the splash pan around this. But the Shimpo Light is a round splash pan and it's got a round sort of table, so it'd be hard to build something. Anyway, <clears throat> we're making handles. So squash it down till you've got about a thickness that you think the handle should be. And leave it a bit thicker at the outer edge here. Now I'm going to give a quick measure. Got to go further out. So here's what I'm doing. I put my finger down right through to the bat. And then let's get some water in here. And then open up 
So you, I'm going right through to the bat. So you can see the bat there, white. So I'm basically making a great big wheel, a great big tire. Let's measure again. Ooh, I'm close, but just a touch more. So the principle is that if I can get the inner hole here, the size of the outer side, size of the ball, when that is perfect, then it will fit. So now I'm just going to flatten it down a bit more to thin it a bit, because it's a bit thick, I think. I'll measure it again, because I think I squished it in a bit. Oh, it's still there, that's good. Okay, now, obviously, this is the outer edge of your, gonna be where the, the handle is, so feel free to give yourself a little decoration. If you wanna just put a ring in like that, can do that so it's like a double edge that the glaze will catch in there and then use the rib to just lift it up a touch okay so I have enough put this off and show you I have enough to make lots of handles out of that piece which I will demonstrate later in this video but that, I think, will be enough for at least three, possibly four balls. All right, so I've got to throw another three or four balls. Because I can throw these off the hump, but I can also throw them separately. So let's do it both ways so I can show you. I'll do it the easy way so a beginner could, get, could easily do this. Little ball of clay. I mean, this is tiny. It's less than a quarter of a pound. So it's even harder for me to center than a big piece of clay. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's really hard. I can still feel a ripple. My hands are so big that it's hard to feel. Oh, there you go. I think that's better. Okay, so basically, just put a hole in it. Slow the wheel down a bit. I might be able to get two out of this one, actually. Oops, stuck to my finger. Just a touch bumping into my finger there. So that would be a handle, and I can make it narrower. Come up a little bit, coating it a little bit there. That would just be on one side of the ball. I don't like doing them this way. Ooh, I lost my pin. I don't know, I've never liked them this way, but I see people doing it this way, so. It's half the work, that's the good part of it. Get your water out. And this is the end, of course, of the handle, so once again, if you feel like having some fun, you can also stamp these as they're leather hard. You could just put a little groove in the top there So that will catch the, and you could even kind of play with this to give it a little curve bump in there, push it in there, make it flare out a bit more, whatever you want to do with it, basically. And you've got like a little thing that will sit on the edge of the soup bowl. So this is over a pound.
You can center it easy. <laughs> Tiny bit of clay is hard and the bigger one is easy. If you ever have problems centering, do this. It's called coning. And you simply make an ice cream cone, put your hand on top and you squash it back down. And often it will go back into center on its own as you push back down. So put your hole in again, feel for that center point, go down. While you've got some water in there, pull out. Only when it starts to stick, let go slowly. Because water is the reason it doesn't go off center most of the time, I think. Your finger just catches and sticks in one place, it pulls the pot in, you know, and then it's off center. Okay, so fingers now on this side of the pot, two fingers below on the outside, and they're a bit higher up on the inside, and pull up your wall. As your first wheel, if you're just getting started in pottery, this is a good one to go with. It's not as silent. So this is a Shimpo Light, sorry. Uh, it's not as silent as the Shimpo Whisper. There we go. So this is a little thicker, because it's more clay, and it's a little bigger. But I am going to try and make them all to the same... Oh, instantly right. There you go. Uh, oh no, I was measuring the outside of the piece. So this is bigger, yeah. So let's push it in just a touch there. And that's very close. So we'll go back in just a touch more, just to knock it in just a touch. That way that ring of donut that I threw will fit. And you can make a spiral just by hitting the center and pulling your finger out a little faster. Give yourself a, a decorative thing that was easy to master. And then put the groove in the bottom. Use the curve of the metal rib, which you can bend like that. And give you a nice little curvy bit. At this point, if you wanted to give yourself a little extra decorative edge there to catch some glaze, you can do that. So I've got two lines there, as you can see, that will help catch the glaze. Measure twice, cut once. There you go, that's close. It's a little bit bigger, but the piece will fit around that easily enough. Um, okay, so that's number two. So it's very close to the other one, but it's a touch deeper and bigger. morning again. This is the following day after I threw all the soup bowls. Um, I'm going to put handles on them this morning. Um, so I've spent some time just softening up uh, the edges of my bowls because they were in the damp cupboard all night but they got a little stiffer than I wanted. So I just dipped them upside down in water a couple of times and they're fine. I've made a couple of styles of handles. Um, you can see these in the in the video that I've done recently on chip and dips. That's how those handles are made. Um, and I just pulled some handles there, so you can see those in the tankard uh, video that I just did, um, which I haven't posted yet, but I'll, it'll be posted by the time this is up. Uh, but anyway, um, and uh, then I've got the ones that I threw yesterday, which were simply discs, um, and that's one you can see that is ready to go. Um, this is one that I've already cut up into eight handles so that I can get four balls out of this one disc. Um, and all I did to do that, you can do it with a, you know, I'm sure they sell a tool already to do that, but I have this harp and all I do is I find the center of the piece, uh, center of the bat, and I just press down and then carefully pull towards myself and then find the center again and make sure I'm going into quarters this time. Go down again and this time I'll pull to myself carefully so the piece doesn't move. And then I'll do it again. That one moved a touch actually but it's close. Um, there, find the center so you know you're getting these equal. 
press down, pull sideways again. I'm turning the bat as I do this so it doesn't actually pull the handle out with the harp. This harp, I think they sell it in England. I don't think I've ever seen one in the United States or Canada. Uh, but you can make them from rebar. Um, it's a really useful tool. I use it all the time. And it's got grooves <laughs> up and down so you can measure slabs. It's meant for cutting slabs, basically. And it's a guitar string. Um, so whether you can... I'm surprised that there's a couple of tools I had in England. There was a glaze sieving machine thing that I used to use, and I've never seen that here either, but anyway. So then you cut that, and then I spend some time wetting, just using a paintbrush, wetting the center ring, the center edge, I should say, because I want to get that down to almost as soft as when I threw the piece, but leaving the outer edge not soft. This is the one I started already. So basically, I'm just trying to soften the edge where I'm going to be adhering it. Um, and I've got a variety of these ready. Um, let's see how, yep, it's movable. Can you see it? I should hold it close to you. I can easily move it, all right? Which means if I just take a brush and I basically wet the area and, and also make sure these are opposite, where I'm gonna stick the handle. It's very soft already. Then the one that I've already got softening, yeah, it's very sticky on that side there. All I have to do, I'm gonna stand up for this part of it, make sure you've got them opposite each other. And because I measured the actual, uh, when I, with the calipers when I was throwing these, I measured, they will, the curve is perfect. And then this one, opposite again, move it sideways, just like when I put my handles on, I showed you a video of me doing handles on my tankards. So you basically just moving it up and down and then using the ferrule of the brush, I'll sit back down for this, you basically smooth it in again. I guess you can't really see it. You can move forward a bit. Do it this side. So I'm just using the ferrule of the brush. It's hard to do it with my hands in the way. Oh, right, you've noticed I've moved the camera because in the um, video when I was doing tankards the other day, my cat is getting very demanding. And um, so uh, he likes attention and he's, he's about 14, 15 years old. So he's a geriatric um, and he's getting more and more demanding. So I thought, well, I'll put the, the camera right over the top of him. He's underneath. <laughs> he's still there. But for some reason, and I washed his bed, um, and he's actually sleeping quite contently. I think he really just wanted me to wash his bed. Okay. Yeah, you can just see it gets a little bit. But I'm just using the brush as a modeling tool and as a smoothing tool at the same time. And it's fairly stiff. I might get to turn it upside down. But let me let this stiffen up a little bit. But you got the idea. So I got a soup bowl with handles to go in the oven so you can easily take it out of the oven. The next one, I'm just going to wet these down a bit. The, everything in clay is time sensitive. I guess I can turn this down a touch too. Uh, time sensitive. Um, so you're really trying to catch the clay when it'll save you as much time as possible. A lot of times if I'm joining handles too, I will just make a mark on the rim. They sell that one tool I've seen in it. It's made of plexiglass. 
and um, that can, you can get exact measurements around a circle. That might be worth me getting at some point. We're always looking for new toys to play with in our studios. So I'm just wetting because I know this is movable. It's very movable. So it's at the point where clay will just literally melt in. So I just flatten the edge of my little handle here. And I like to just dab a little water on it. So once again, these were made in my chip and dip video. You can see those there. And now you can make this stick out as much as you want. I think you need, if you're going to lift things out of the oven, you need to be safe and secure so it doesn't slip out of your hand. But you also want to be, um, you want to make sure that, you know, I'm just swashing down the handle a little bit so it's flattened on one side. You want to make sure it doesn't slip out of your hands, but you also want to make sure that it's not big enough so it gets broken off too easily. Because, uh, you know, things in and out of the oven hit the rack and um, so you don't want to lose a piece. Anyway, so just work your handle in. There we go. Okay, so there's another handle. Nope. Using the rope handle that I've done before, and I'll stick some little buttons, that's my signature, I guess, on the end of that rope handle there. Just give it a minute to, to basically, ah, there he goes. Um, so what do we do? Okay, strap handles. Let's actually do this first. I pulled the strap handles just like I did for the tankers. Um, I want them to be the same size. Um, I only need to do one of these at the moment, but I'm going to put them all down so that they are the, there's enough for four cups here. So using my ruler or a knife, gently chop off. There we go. So we've got four bowls worth of handles there. And these ones, let's see if this is sticky. Yep, still sticky. Wet it where you think you're going to get your handle. And a good idea, like I said, is to, just to make a little mark so you can see where it's going to be. Just wetting it with a paintbrush where the handle's going to be smudged in. Now, I can put this on just like that, and that's the way it would, you know, it would work just fine, just putting it straight on like that. All right, so that's easy. But you can also turn this one and put it on like that. So you're bending it down a little bit. So that's your choice. I'm just gonna do it like this. Um, and um, But you literally can do it any way you want. And I try to twist it so that the handle sticks out a little bit so you can get your fingers under there a little bit. Um, and then basically you're just using your fingers where you just wet the clay down and it's soft still. You're simply smudging it in. And then you can lift it a bit higher if you want to get it a little bit higher. And just clean it up. And then you can use your paintbrush to just kind of work underneath a little bit just to lift it a bit more if you want to. Now I try not to make that part of it go above the rim of the pot. So I'll work that back down a touch there because I want to be able to trim these. All right, so you've got another type of soup handle. Just find the middle of the handle, turn the handle around like that. And that may be a bit high, so I'm going to take it down a touch. And as soon as you think you've got the right height, 
you just put your thumb on it like that and just move it around a bit so you feel like it's really stuck and then smudge your clay Just wiggling your thumb, basically, will make it adhere. Because I just soften these down a bit again, remember. They're, they're bendable, but they're still stiff enough so that you're actually able to work it without denting the clay. And then just manipulate it. Get it down a bit at the back so it doesn't stick up where the rim is. That one needs to go in a bit more to be level with the other one. So you got to look at both until you feel like you got it. At least they look sort of symmetrical, I think. All right, so that's another French onion soup bowl. All right. The last one of the handles uh, that I threw yesterday to put on is this little tiny, I threw it off the hump, I think, if I remember yesterday. But it's uh, no, uh, it's basically just a small, like you throw a spout, but the other way up. Um, but basically I've kind of slit it off at a slight angle to match the bowl. Um, and scored this one because it's a bit dry at the moment. And um, here's the bowl. It's the last one I have. I've done all the rest. So just, this one is still movable. So it's very soft. I had uh, softened up an area on here. It must be around here, there you go. And then basically, try to put some pressure behind it. And put it into the piece. Now I don't, as I said yesterday when I was throwing this one, I don't like these type of handles very much. Um, but I see them all the time, people are making them. Um, so I know that it's something customers will be familiar with. After you've got it sort of in place, you just smooth it off around the join area and the same on the inside too. I'm not sure if this one's probably a little oversized, I think. Um, you could probably make it a touch smaller. I just did all my balls and I realized I'd forgotten this one. All right, that's the last one. So what I've done, you can see on all these pieces here on the shelf, I've been uh, basically making sets of four different style handles. Uh, all I have to do to these now is as they, they're a bit soft at the moment, I'm going to let them stiffen for an hour and turn them uh, upside down and then sort of smooth in the underside of each handle. Um, and uh, that's about it. And then trimming them and uh, I'll, I'll show you that next. All right, thanks. Morning, it's now time to trim the uh, soup bowls. Um, these have the handles, um, a variety of different handles, um, and they're not able to normally sit on the giffing grip. Let me give you a little view. Um, the handles being opposite mean well, there's always one of these in the way, so you've got to find something that they can sit on top of um, that you'll be able to trim with. So throwing a bunch of those just for using in your giffing grip is a good idea. Um, so let's see if I can get this so it's centered. That's close enough. It's actually, there's just a touch off there and when you get used to trimming, you can usually get away with something like that and being a little off and be able to deal with it. But, um, if you really want it perfect, you can do that. And then you're just trimming a foot on them. These are for the oven. So basically you don't need to thin them because that would actually maybe potentially result in cracking. And I will probably flute these, so I'm not gonna trim too much off there either. So it's really just the foot that you're interested in and you've got to be careful because your finger has to stay pushing down on these because you've got that pressure that's necessary to keep it on that chuck 
So trimming to the center and back, keep your finger on that. And then remember not to thin it out too much if it's gonna go in the oven. It retains its heat when it comes out of the oven too, so I think that that's a, it's a function of these is that you know, you're know you making soup that needs to be kept hot to go into the table. And they have to be certainly quite durable. Ding. Be careful you don't knock your handle off. Just something to give the glaze a little edge. I'm making sure I come away where the handle is there a little bit. And then I would go over these with a sponge just to make sure that there's no rough edges on them at all. <laughs> 